All right, guys, check this out. Alice edit, my edit. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to edit your short like Ali Abdel style in CapCut PC. Let's get started. You're gonna drag the image and drop in the timeline. Go to the first frame, make sure you select the image. Then go to the right side of the software. Make a keyframe on scale. Then go 13 frames forward. Make another keyframe on scale. And this time around, change the figures to 120%. So we have something like this. It zooms in slowly on the screen. I have a PNG. What? PNG. I have a PNG that I bought some years back, so I'm gonna use that. But if you wanna get a free one, I'll show you guys with this green screen. Just drag and drop in the timeline. So you can get this one on pixels.com. It's absolutely free, but they come with this green screen. I'll leave a link down there below. You can check on that later on. Just click on that, go to the right side of the software, click on cut out, then click on chroma key and select the color picker. Then you select the green side of it and use the strength, increase it, and there you go, you have the paper ripped effect. But I'm gonna use the PNG file that I have already. So let me just delete this, click on the one that I have, and drag that in the timeline. So the paper is gonna come in when I zoom in on the image. So we click on our image, check where we have the last keyframe, somewhere here. Take the playhead there, and drag your paper to that exact place. And when you look carefully at Ali's edit, he has this movement with the paper ripped. And with this, this is how you can create similar to what he has. Click on the PNG file, go to effect, scroll down, click on shake, drag and drop on the PNG file. So right from there, it looks very fast, so we need to dial it down. Make sure the playhead is on that side. Go to the right side with the strength, take it to somewhere two to five. So I'll leave it at three, and then the speed also will go to somewhere two to five. And now we have this small movement to the paper. Now with the paper rip selected, go to the right side of the software, click on mask, then click on split, then use the on-screen controls and rotate it to negative 180 degrees something like this and drag it downwards till the paper rip disappear on the screen now go to the first frame of that png file then go to the right side of the software make a keyframe on position then go somewhere 10 to 18 frames forward make another keyframe on position and now use the on-screen controls drag the split mask to the very top of the screen so now we have something like this it zooms in and the paper comes in now click on that png file command c or control c to copy then command v or control v to paste on top of it make sure it's the same length as the down paper rip with the top one selected go to adjustments scroll down saturation turn it to zero let's move to somewhere in the middle so we can see exactly what we're doing brightness turn it to zero contrast zero highlight zero shadow zero and then illumination zero we just want to darken that paper rip now with that selected go to the right side of the software and click on video then click on basic and scroll down then with the layers put it on layer one so it will go below this very white one let me drag it down so it will not confuse you guys so now this is the white one and this is the one that we darken it now with the one that we darken it click on that with the position go to your right side by two to five so we can go more i think somewhere 14 will be good with this we just want to create that shadow look to it so when you look carefully on the screen you have this black looking like a shadow with a paper rip now i'll play and show you guys how it looks like so it zooms in and then the paper rip goes up Ali uses cutout for his edit a lot when you look at his videos go to the left side of the software click on the media and I have my talking head right here. So I'm just gonna click on that. I for the in point, O for the out point, drag and drop in the timeline. Now click on this very image that we have, move it upwards and this is gonna snap to that lane. Let's just move this down one step. So now this is gonna be our background video we're gonna use. So if you don't have this feature, you can click on this snap tool. It's really, really important or necessary when it comes to editing. It makes your life easier. Now click on the talking head video, 
command or control C to copy, then command or control V to paste on top of it. Now click on the down one, press V to disable it and click on the top one. Go to the right side of the software, click on cut out, then click on auto cut out. So now we have this image cut out nicely. Then press on the down video, press V to enable it. Now we need to animate the cutout to come in on the screen. So with that, we just go to somewhere here, click on the cutout talking head. Remember this was the cutout. Then go to the right side of the software, make a keyframe on position. Then go somewhere 20 to 25 frames forward. Make another keyframe on position. Now use this arrow to go back to the first keyframe we created. And over there, just drag it downwards. And make sure your position X stays zero, so it doesn't move sideways. So now we have something like this. It comes in slowly on the screen. Now we need to make that smooth. Right click on that, select show keyframe animation. Then click on Y and click on this drop down menu. It's gonna bring your graphs out. Then click on this keyframe, change the curve to auto curve. You can do the same thing too with the first one and select auto curve. Now right click on that and click on hide keyframe animation. And now when you look carefully, it looks so harsh. So we need to put some motion blur onto it to make it nice and clean. And the new features that comes with the new update from CapCut, it has motion blur down here when you go to the right side. But for some reason, when I add that motion blur that comes with the new update and I blend it in, it doesn't feel right. So I'm still gonna go with the old trick that we've been using on this channel. Click on the cutout image, Command C or Control C to copy. Then command V or control V to paste on top of it. Let me drag it so it will be the exact same length as this down ones. Now click on this side, drag it. So we just select just the part that we animated. As you can see, we have the keyframe one here and keyframe two here. So we drag this side to that very second keyframe two. Now with that selected, go to the left side of the software, click on effects. Then click on lens, scroll down, select motion blur, drag and drop on that very one. With the horizontal, we'll just drag it down a little bit to make it look realistic. And then with the strength tool, we'll play around it, go somewhere down. So the next thing to do is to animate the blur to go out. Take your playhead to this very side, that's where the first keyframe was. Then with this one selected, go to opacity, make a keyframe on there. Then go to the last frame of that very one. Make sure you click on that and make a keyframe on opacity. And this time around, drag the opacity back to zero. So when you look carefully, the blur comes in and it goes straight to zero. Ali uses this trick to get the transitions for the background. Drag this to this very side drag this to also this side. So it will be the same length with this image. So now we want to transition from this image to the background of my talking head video. So with this, make sure you go to the last frame of that image and also make sure you select that image too. Go to the right side of the software, make a keyframe on opacity, then go 10 to 15 frames backwards and make a keyframe on opacity. Now use this arrow to go to the first keyframe that we created on the last frame. So somewhere you can see it comes on this side. Over there, opacity, turn it down to zero. So now we need to do the same thing for these two images. Remember, it's still showing at my background, so we need to get that transition on that one too. So with that, I'll take my playhead to the last frame, make sure I click on this go to opacity, make a keyframe there, then go the same frames as I did with this one. So you take your playhead there and then click on this very one and make a keyframe on that side. Now use this arrow to go to the last one that we created and turn the opacity to zero. So now I'll do the same thing with the top one and I'll be fast with this. So now we have something like this, it comes in and then it fades out. And always remember to add some sound effect to it to make it come alive and clean. I believe with this tutorial, I should be doing part two and three of this because Ali has so much tricks that I cannot cover in this very tutorial. So if you want to see part two of this, comment down below. So with this, we'll use this image drag and drop in the timeline. Let me just make it a little bit long. Then let's go for the talking head video, drag and drop on top of it. Let me make it the same length as this. With the talking head selected, go to the right side of the software, 
then click on cutout, then click on auto cutout and CapCut is going to process it. Now we need to animate the talking head to come in. So we'll go to somewhere this side, click on the cutout image, then go to the right side of the software, click on basic, make a keyframe on position. Then this time around, go somewhere 10 to 15 frames forward, make another keyframe on position. Now use this arrow to go to the first keyframe we created and over there we'll just drag it downwards till it disappear on the screen. And always make sure the X stays zero. And once again we need to make that smooth. Right click on that, select show keyframe animation, then click on Y and click on this drop down menu. Then select the second keyframe, then choose auto curve and do the same thing with this one. Select auto curve. Now right click on that and select hide keyframe animation. And once again, we need to add some motion blur to it. Click on that, command C or control C to copy. Then command V or control V to paste on top of it. Move this side to this very keyframe and move this side to this last keyframe. We just wanna select that part. Now go to the left side of the software, click on effect. Then click on lens, scroll down, drag motion blur on the talking head, the one that we have on the top. Now go to the right side, click on this pen to bring the details out. Now with horizontal, let's dial it down to make it realistic. Strength also, let's dial it down. Now click on that and go to the first frame of it. Then go to the right side of the software, make a keyframe on opacity. Then go to the last frame of it, make another keyframe on opacity and this time around, dial it down to zero. So the blur comes in just like we did earlier on. So when you look carefully at Alice edit, when the cutout talking head comes in, he blurs the background. So this is what you're gonna do to blur this image when this comes in. So with that, click on that, Command C or Control C to copy, then Command V or Control V to paste on top of it. Now with that selected, go to the left side of the software, and we're gonna use blur this time around. Drag and drop on this very one. And when you look carefully at Alice edit, the blur that's added to it is very strong. Let me show you guys. When I increase this to 100%, it's still not the same as Alice's own. So we're gonna add more to it. So let me go there once again, drag one more on top of it, increase it more, go once again, drag blur on top of it and increase it again. Now I feel like it looks okay, but if you want, you can add more till it looks okay to your eyes. And now we need to animate that blur. So with that, make sure you select the top image, go to the right side of the software, then click on opacity. Then when you look carefully, this was the second keyframe. That this was when it came in. We take our cursor there, make sure you click on the image and make a keyframe on opacity. Now use this arrow to go to the first keyframe that we created on that very image when you look carefully at this side. Now with that, turn it down to zero. And now as you can see, it's covering the top talking head. So we need to make it go below this very one. So with that, just click on that, go to the right side of the software, on layer, put it on layer one. So I'll show you guys, so it comes in and it's at the background of the talking head video. And now the next thing to do is go somewhere in the middle, click on the talking head video, make a keyframe on scale and position. Now go 10 to 15 frames forward and make another keyframe on scale and position. And this time around we'll just increase it a bit and move it downwards. So now I'll play and show you guys. It comes in for a while and then it zooms in. And there's one trick that he does a lot. When he zooms in, he darkens the image behind him. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So with that, we need to select these two images, right click that and create compound clip. Click on the talking head video so we can see exactly where the keyframes are. So as we can see, it's on this side and this side. Now click on the compound clip we just selected. Make a keyframe on opacity and click on this very one so we can see where the second one is. Take your playhead there and click on this compound clip. And once again, make a keyframe on opacity. And this time around, just dial it down to somewhere 50 to 60%. So I'll show you guys. It zooms in and then the background also goes dark a little bit. 
So Ali does this a lot. He always reveals some text or some object behind him. So with this, go somewhere this side. Make sure you click on the talking head video. Go to the right side of the software. Make a keyframe on position. Then go five to 10 frames forward. Make another keyframe on position. And this time around, just drag it downwards. And now we need to bring our test. We're gonna use test for this. Go to the left side of the software. Click on text. Then click on default text, drag and drop in the timeline. Now click on the talking head video. We want to use the same keyframes that we created earlier on. With this, you can see the one start from this side. So take our playhead there and drag the test to that very side. But first of all, let's just change our test and then change the font style. So now we need to animate it to come behind me. With that, right click on the test, select create compound clip. Now with the compound clip selected, go to the right side of the software, scroll down and put it on layer one. Click on the compound clip, make a keyframe on position. Then I'm gonna follow exactly the keyframe animation down here. So the second one comes on this side, take your playhead there and click on the compound clip. And over there, we'll just drag it upwards. So I'll play all together and show you guys what we have so far. It comes in, it zooms in, and then it goes down. Now with the caption style, just like what you're seeing on the screen, you can see it on this very video on number four on that list. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.